Welcome back. This is learning module eight, memory two. So we are going to spend a second week talking about memory phenomena and memory principles. As a reminder, you should be reading the second chapter on memory. It's chapter nine, memory two from the textbook. This series of mini lectures roughly covers what's in that chapter. Here's what's in store. We've got a roadmap. I'm going to try to do this in three videos and keep them uh, to about 20 minutes each. Fingers crossed. Hopefully that is what happens. We're going to talk about measuring memory. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of different examples of memory phenomena that have been described in cognitive research. And then we're going to talk about some general principles of memory. So let's get started. Measuring memory. Memory processes and abilities are measured with memory tasks. And one thing to note about this is that these tasks are usually imperfect. And we will need to critically evaluate how performance in a particular task actually relates to hypothesized memory processes. Unfortunately, we don't have tasks that directly measure uh, the processes of interest and we have to usually take our results with a grain of salt. Overall, this means that when we learn something, when we get a result from a task that might involve human memory or animal memory processes, we will consider the extent to which the result tells us something general about how memory works or tells us something about how people and animals perform in that particular task. Let's talk about two tasks that are commonly used to measure memory performance. Here I have the recall task and the recognition memory task. Let's talk about some of the differences and we'll do an example here in this first part. So a recall task has two major components, an encoding phase. And usually in this phase, people are presented with a list of items. For example, lots of different words or pictures or things to remember. I have here usually words because a lot of the research that has been done on human memory involves memory for lists of words. So after you read a bunch of words, let's say, for a later memory test, you could enter the recall phase, the second part of the experiment. And here you would be asked to produce or generate as many items from the list as possible. For example, you would write down as many words as you can remember. So you might have a blank piece of paper and write down all those words. That's a recall task. Here's a different way that people sometimes measure memory performance. It's called a recognition memory task. The encoding phase here would be fairly similar. You would view a list of words or a list of items for a later recognition test. So what happens in the second phase? Here in the recognition phase, participants would view typically one item at a time. So you'd see a word or something, a picture you saw before. And your task now is to judge whether the item you're looking at is an old item, one that was shown before, or a new item one that was not shown before. We could use both of these kinds of tasks to get some measurement of how many things you could remember uh, from some information that you tried to learn about. And they, they give dis different kinds of results. We'll see an example of that in the memory phenomenon section. All right, so I think it's useful to try some of these things out ourselves. So we're gonna do an example memory task. Here's a quick demo. We're gonna do a memory test for words. And before we start, I wanna make sure that you have a way to write down some answers. So press pause, get a piece of paper and a pen, or you could use your phone or a computer or whatever. But in a moment here, we are going to do an encoding phase. We're going to see some words. Actually, you're going to hear the words. I'm going to say them out loud. 
And then we're going to do a recall phase. So you get a feeling of what the recall task is like. And we'll do a recognition phase also. So you can get a feeling for the recognition task. All right. This is the encoding phase. I am about to read 15 words to you. I'm going to read them one at a time. And I will read them at a rate of about 1.5 seconds per word. So I'm going to ask you to try to remember each word as best as you can. Ready? All right. Listen to each word starting now. Bed. Rest. Awake. Tired. Dream. Wake. Snooze. Blanket. Doze. Slumber. Snore. Nap. Peace. Yawn. Drowsy. All right, that's all the words. And let's take a minute here. We're going to try out the recall test. So get out that piece of paper and write down as many individual words as you can remember from the list of words that I just read out loud. At the end of this, I'll show you the list of words that I read out loud. And you can uh, count how many you correctly recalled. And this would give us a measurement of your memory performance. So go ahead, press pause, go to a blank piece of paper and write down as many of those words as you can remember. Okay, so let's say you did that. Let's uh, continue. So you should have all these words you tried to remember. Hopefully it wasn't uh, terribly difficult, although I'm pretty sure I couldn't remember all 15 of those words. Let's now try a recognition task. And this is a different way for, or actually let me back up and say, in the recall test, you started with nothing and you had to think of all the words that you heard. So you had to generate or produce those words as evidence that you saw them before. In the recognition task, you don't have that requirement. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you a word and you're going to make a judgment. Did you see that word before? Or sorry, did you hear the word before? Or is it a new word? Let's try it out. So did you hear this word from before? Is this word old or is it new? Snooze. So if you said old, in this case, uh, you'd be correct. This was one of the words I said before. The incorrect answer would be saying new because this wasn't one of the words I said before. How about this word? Is this word old or new? So in this case, um, you might say, I, I mean, you could choose either one. You could say whatever you want, but I didn't say this word before. So the correct answer here would be new. How about this word? Is this word old or new? All right. So this is a recognition memory test. It is slightly different from a recall test. In this test, I show you things and you have to judge whether you saw it before or not. All right. If we go back to the recall test, what uh, you could do if you want to figure out how well you did is you could take a look at these words. These are all the words that I listed earlier when I read them out loud. So you could look at your list of words that you recalled and you can go figure out which ones you got correct, how many you got. And that would be a measurement of your recall task performance. So just to restate, how many words did you recall correctly? That is a measurement of your performance in the recall test. Recall tests are interesting. A bunch of things can happen here. You might have written down words that were not on this list. And that could be something, uh, an interesting 
phenomena that could occur. We'll talk about that in a moment. We also have questions about what the measure of performance actually uh, means for your, for your memory. For example, does failing to recall a word from the list mean that you don't have a memory for it? We can consider this question. Um, I'm sure we could find examples where you didn't write down a word from the list. Like for example, maybe you forgot to write down the word doze. But it's quite possible that if we had you write down all the words from the list a second time, maybe you would remember doze on your second attempt for remembering. And failing to recall an item uh, one time doesn't mean you won't be able to recall it later. So the measurement of not putting a word down there doesn't necessarily mean you didn't have a memory for that word. Let's talk about recognition task performance for, for a second. So how did you do on the recognition task? We only did three trials there. There was 15 total words that I presented in the encoding phase, and it might be fairly common to have 30 words for the recognition test. Uh, people will be presented with one of the 15 old words or one of the 15 new words, and one at a time, so there, it would, you have to go through all 30. We could figure out how many of the old ones you got correct and how many of the new ones you got correct. One of the issues in this task is that performance can depend on how easy the new items are. For example, um, if you picked words that are really long, like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, that wasn't one of the words I said. And if I put it in the list of uh, what are sometimes called lures, words that are meant to trick you into saying they're old words, it would be pretty obvious that the new word that was really long wasn't in the original list. So people can perform very well on a recognition task for reasons that don't have really a lot to do with remembering prior words, but it could have to do with being able to tell the difference between what some new category of words looks like versus the style of words that were presented in the encoding phase. It's also possible that people can get 100% correct on this task for all of the old items. One way you could do this is just for every single word, say that was old every single time. You'd get all the new words wrong, but you get all the old words right. So just because you do 100% correct on the old words, it doesn't really mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that you remembered all those words. And this is another example of how we need to consider some of the limitations of our measurements as we try to learn about memory processes. All right, we are coming to a close on our first part, and I was hoping to get this under 20 minutes, and it looks like we'll get it under 15. The next part has to do with memory phenomena. We're going to explore different kinds of laboratory-based memory phenomena. These are experimental manipulations that are known to influence your memory performance. So as a first example, we're going to talk about a false memory phenomena. In fact, we, you might have just experienced that in this first part already. Let me ask you a question. When you did the memory test, did you write down this word sleep? Or did you recognize it from the list? Did you think this was one of the old words? If you wrote this word down, or if you thought you recognized it, you thought it was an old word, then you may have just had a false memory. This word wasn't presented. I didn't say this word out loud. And if you want to double check, you can pause the video, rewind, and go listen to all the words I said. And you will see, or hear, that I didn't say this word. So it wasn't on the list. However, this list of words was uh, specifically constructed 
to elicit false memories for the target word sleep. If you go back and look at all of those words, actually we could do that really fast here, all these words here, they all have to do with the concept of sleeping. And this is a way in which you can get people, you can get them to um, even have high confidence that they might have heard the central category word. Uh, this is a famous finding. You, if you want to learn more about it, you could read this paper by Henry Rodiger and Kathleen McDermott. We aren't going to dive into the details of false memory phenomena just yet, but I thought I would put it out there as a, as a fun and interesting example of a memory phenomena that we can produce in, in the laboratory. All right, so that's it for this section. Tune in for part two, where we talk about additional kinds of memory phenomena.